guys in the fast lane here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace your clutch, pressure plate, slave cylinder, and throw up bearing for all Mazda B series and Ford Rangers. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this uh, shifting console right here. And we're going to take the boot off. And then there should be two Torx head screws in there. And uh, the shifter comes out. So here's where the screws were, and I just shoved the boot down in there, and now we're just going to pull it up, just like that. And what we're looking for is to pull this boot up right here, this whole main boot. So we got four more screws. We got one here, one there, and two more. You can move the shifter, two more down at the bottom here. Now, I'm sure you can see this. There's a big, uh, looks like maybe a 17 millimeter bolt, possibly. Um, you can take that off, pull the shifter out, and then pull the boot. 17 millimeter bolt coming out the side of the shifter. You're going to take that off because you can't get to the Torx heads screws that are underneath it. Um, the Torx heads are T30. Once you've taken off the 17 millimeter bolt, you're going to put it on the other side and you're going to tighten it pretty quick. What that's going to do is it's going to turn the shaft inside there and release the, uh, there's like this extra hub thing in there. There we go. And once you get it turned just right, it, it'll uh, be able to bang out. And you're just going to knock it out. Now here's what I was telling you about. As you can see, you put it in there, and then when you turn it, it locks in. So uh, the next time you need to do that, that's how you'll do it. So now all we do is just pull the shifter up, and that's it. Set it down. Take our uh, cover off. And now I was telling you about those Torx head, the T30. Stick it in there, take those two out, and pull it right out. Once you've taken the Torx heads out, you're just going to pull up, and that's it, just like that. So uh, just set this aside. If you look right here, always remember that this back piece right here is going to be facing the uh, the seats. After we remove the uh, shifter, you're going to take this right here, the hydraulic line going to the clutch. All you're going to do is put a well, let me see if I can't get the light to stay there. You're going to put a flathead right here on this clip and pop it out. And then it should pull right out. It's just this little clip right here. This dark one right there. Now once you did that, you're going to pull your sensor. We have, if you look right here, we have a uh, reverse light sensor. We also have another sensor right here. Just unplug those two, and that should be pretty much it. Just make sure the wires right here are disconnected from the tranny. Um, now that that's done, or after that's done, because I'm going to try to do this quick, because um, I kind of got to get this truck out of the garage. Um, right here, that's your uh, starter. It's just two bolts. Let me see if I can't get the light quite in there. Yeah. Alright, here we are. Okay. The bolt we're looking for is this one. You're going to pull this plastic grommet off. There we go. And you're going to take that bolt out right there. And then up top. You can probably barely see it sticking out right there. You're going to pull that one out and then the starter should come off. I'm not even going to disconnect the wires, just kind of let it hang. Then when that's done, pretty much we're going to come over here. And we're going to remove the drive shaft right there. And in order to remove the drive shaft, you go down to the end right there. There's four... Uh, Torx head, I believe they are 12 millimeter Torx head, or not Torx head, but uh, 12 millimeter 12 point. And you're going to just take those off, and then the shaft slides 
right out. So once that shaft slides out, um, it's it's probably going to leak when you drop it down. So I would suggest coming over here, right here on the fill bolt, and uh, or the drain bolt, not the fill, excuse me, and drain it. This is brand new uh, transmission fluid in here, uh, Marcon 5, so I'm going to go ahead and drain it in a nice clean, uh, maybe milk carton or something like that. First things first is I went ahead and put some jack stands under here. If you're looking to find placement for the Ford Rangers and stuff, the only best part I could really find, I mean I could put them out here if I wanted to, but uh, this one kind of looks just as good just because it has like a solid cast iron or whatever solid steel piece of lip and it kind of fits right in my jack nicely did the same thing with the other one over here shook the truck a little bit it's pretty solid so here's what I'm up against um, I can't get a um, transmission jack fast enough so I'm just gonna make something real quick it's not very thick but what I'm gonna do to reinforce it is I'm gonna take it off and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this swivel piece if you look right here, there's a uh, cotter pin. You can pull it right out, and then the piece comes out, and then there's a hole. So what I'll do is I'll set this board on there. And I've seen it quite a few on YouTube and stuff, people do it. I'm just going to drill a hole in the middle. I'm going to put a bolt through there, but before I do that, um, I want better support. So I'll probably try to get maybe uh, some stack some washers up, or I might just very well... Uh, find some kind of uh, socket that's as high as the depth on this or something. I'll figure something out. Might even get another piece of wood, cut a square out. So just so it gives it some more support. All right, so here's where I'm at. Took two of them. I just got a bolt, a washer, and a bigger washer. And you can see I cut it out for the middle. And you can just stack two of them together if you really want to, but I just didn't just use the same piece of wood. Um, under here, see if you can see this um, I just put got a long enough bolt with a lock washer bolted in there now you can see they kind of match on either side so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, one by two and I'm gonna measure it out and put a piece there and then I'm gonna put a piece like right over here somewhere now I'm gonna slide this underneath the truck real quick I got the truck all jacked up as you can see here, I'm a little uh, crazy on security, so I got two jack stands on either side, and then I have another uh, scissor jack in the middle with some wood because it wouldn't reach. <laughs> and here's my new uh, transmission jack. It's going to be upside down. I'm going to pump it from up and down. Just kidding. <laughs> nope, this is what it's going to look like. Got it screwed in all like that. You can kind of see it. And then. The boards are in there, tad bit crooked, but I don't care. I was just slipping them on there super fast, just trying to get them, trying to get it done. Um, this is just boards I had laying around. It's screwed in there really tight. What I'll do is I'll get my strap. I'll run my strap up under over and tighten it down, two of them, so it'll hold the transmission on here. So here's the finished product. Pretty much I turned it around on it, make it easier. Um, it works out pretty good. Got boards on either side, and then what I'll be doing is I'll run a strap up over and then kind of strap it from underneath here. Um, what I could do is put a screw here and then a screw here so where this it guides the straps so the straps don't slide off or anything like that. Screw it in like halfway, have them hanging down, and that should do the trick. All right, as far as sensors go, we got a sensor here. We also have a sensor right there on the back and we have one more sensor that is right here. It's clipped to this. You got to unclip it. So if you look right here, we have one, two, three. The clutch cylinder, I'm just going to pop my little thing in there, spin it around a little bit. Kind of got to get it up. And the clip should pop right out. I'm gonna get a bigger flathead and pop that right out. And but you can see what's happening. You just stick a flathead in there, pop it out, and then the line will just pull right out. Before I take the starter off, I gotta disconnect the positive terminal on the battery. 
All right, guys. So pretty much we got we got one bolt here, 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 and here. They're 13 millimeters. You got a bolt right there. It's on the back side over here. So don't forget that one. It's back here. Then up top here, you got if you can see them right there. There's two holes, and those are on the back side of the transmission over here. So you're gonna have to get behind it and get it. And then all the way in the back, there's two on top of the transmission. So you got two on top of the transmission, right behind the head, and you can get them by going right up through here on this side, and then on this side, you go right up here. And it's easier to get when the starter's out first. There's a starter, I took that out. There's three bolts on the starter. There's two on the side over here, and then there's one in the back right there so you can see them see that one in the back by the uh, motor mount anyhow so that's what you're gonna take out take all the ones in the top and in the back out first and then just leave these ones right here and when you're done with that you're going to take out the tail shaft and then when you're done taking out the tail shaft then we're gonna take out this uh, cross member okay so I got the uh, drive shaft out and basically we're just gonna come over here and support the transmission right before the motor mount or the transmission mount um, with a jack stand or a jack. And then we're gonna take out these two bolts right here. And then on both sides of this, we're gonna take out these three bolts right here. You got one, two, and three. And then this is gonna drop down. We get that out of the way. Then we pull in our uh, homemade transmission or whatever you want to call it, jack stand. We put it up under here and then we strap it in and we take out those those uh, one, two, three, four bolts and then we start pulling the transmission out. Okay, after you remove the support bar, you're just going to take out these two bolts right here on either side and they're holding on this uh, motor mount, or, or the not the motor mount, but the exhaust mount right here. So that's gonna call for, I believe, a 19 millimeter. So zip these two out. All we have left is just this one bolt right here. As you can see, I got it strapped in. As soon as I pull that last bolt right there, it, I'm gonna wiggle it, and then I'm gonna release it. It should drop right down, and then we'll take the pressure plate off, the clutch, and the flywheel. I'm gonna be changing out the main, the rear main seal on the engine. Also, you might as well do that while you're in there. And also, I'm gonna take off the casing right here to the drive axle and I'm gonna seal that up with some uh, gray RTV. Just got the transmission out. Don't forget this bolt up top right here. If you can see, nobody shows you this, but you got bolts right there, but you got that bolt way up in the middle. It's a pain in the butt to get to. So don't forget that one because it'll separate in the bottom, but it won't separate on the top. So you got those ones up top and then you got all those down at the bottom. We're just gonna take all these 10 millimeter bolts right here off and be careful because the clutch is actually inside there and what you can do is you can put the keyway in there from the new clutch kit and just slide it in there so the clutch doesn't fall down on your face but we got uh, one two three four five and six 10 millimeter bolts we're gonna take out here's what the problem is we got a broken clutch spring what was happening is when I would let go of the clutch just a little bit, it would go it's chatter a little bit, make all kinds of noises, and yeah, it's done. It snapped. Also, when you listen to the other ones, that's bad too. You don't want to hear any kind of rattle with your clutch springs. None. They got to be in there real tight. So at first I thought I might have had a broken uh, fork, or not fork, but uh, some broken fingers on my uh, pressure plate but I didn't, so uh, that's fine. Believe it or not, this clutch, um, it actually um, it had, did pretty well for having 211,000 miles. If I look right here too, there's also other chipped pieces of, man, hopefully it didn't damage the uh, flywheel. If it did, I'm gonna have to get it resurfaced. So we'll see. Um, right here, it looks like it got a little bit of scrapage. Here's the flywheel. And as you can see, um, the spring touched it just a little bit, but those are just surface scratches. I can't even feel it with my fingernail. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use this flywheel again without getting it resurfaced. It looks pretty good. Um, a lot of people will argue the fact about getting a flywheel resurfaced, but I'll tell you what, I've been using flywheels without getting them resurfaced for years, and I've unless it's like a race application, then I suggest getting it resurfaced, but um, other than that, not really. I mean, if it has some nasty grooves in it, but where the clutch isn't even touching, there's not even a lip, like nothing. So you can tell this flywheel got very little. For 211,000 miles, this is probably one of the best flywheels I've seen. Really smooth. I mean, it. the camera looks bad, but it's not bad at all. Alright guys, so I got the uh, clutch and flywheel off. If you're wondering what size the clutch bolts are, 18 millimeter. It'll take, or not the clutch, the uh, flywheel bolts are 18 millimeter. Um, 8 millimeter on the main shaft, or the main shaft seal, the rear main seal. I'm going to take this out. Um, I ordered one. If you do this transmission, you're going to want to change out the main seal. There's no point in doing it if you don't change it out because you're going to be doing it eventually. And you don't want to have to do this job all over again. Well, as I'm working on this truck, I look down in here and I'm like, what the heck? I mean, that's a pretty monster uh, beetle right there. Kind of got caught in the cone of my... Uh, Light here. Looks like a rhino beetle. Or something. I don't know. But man, that thing, I wouldn't want that flying in my face. Okay, so I took all the bolts. 8 millimeters out of the uh, rear main seal. You're just going to grab it and pull it forward. And that's pretty much it. What's nice about this setup is you don't even have to worry about having a... Uh, to rip out the transmission or the oil pan so uh, they put some RTV down at the bottom here and that's what I'm gonna do right here as you can see some black RTV it actually looks like take it back that's just a seal on it but what I'm gonna do I'll probably uh, RTV it here because I mean if you look right here might have been a little bit of leakage not much so that's what it's like taking it off so here's uh, what I got going on here you can see all the uh, great RTV all the way down and in these corners right here I put a little extra because that's where the uh, block meets the oil pan and it's just like uh, the head where it meets the valve cover and the and the loops where the cams are you gotta put a little extra hit there and then down here I got the great RTV all the way so now I'm going to just put it on and uh, pretty much you're just going to lip it. You're going to start from the bottom and work your way in. Just make sure that it's facing forward, the inner um, main seal. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Alright, here's how it looks when it's done. Let me tell you something, it's really tricky. You kind of want to gonna put it on flat, not really kind of turn it. Put, you don't got to put the bottom in first. Uh, just kind of put it in flat and kind of run your finger in it and you want that lip to be facing forward. You don't want the lip to be facing this way. Um, if you look at the original one, as you can see, that lip is facing forward. It's not, this is the factory. It's not facing like this because if it's facing like that, then that's going to push into this uh, velvet or little felt part. So, that's the tricky part, is getting the seal to be facing this way. Basically, the seal is just facing that way. When you're pushing, you're pushing it in, and it wants to fold back this way. So you gotta kinda hold it, and kinda run your finger around it, and keep running it softly. Don't kinda rip it, you don't wanna rip the seal. And then once you get it in there, kinda like, turn it a little bit, and move it in and out. Not all the way off, but in and out, just to make sure that it's kinda looped in. I backed it off just a little bit so you can see what I mean. Um, it's kind of hard because the light is actually, let me see if I can't pull it. All right, here we go. So you see how it's in there? All the way around, it's going forward, okay? There's really no, you can't have that coming back towards that felt part. So this is exactly what you're looking for. 
the uh, proper torque specs for these 8 millimeter is 89 inch pounds. I just looked it up in the Ains manual. Now that I have all the uh, flywheel bolts in, right before I did, I put some Loctite on the threads on all of them, and I just hit them with an impact. Um, I'll probably put the torque specs down in the bottom of the video. Just to clear a few things up for some people versus the OE self-adjusting design and the conventional diaphragm of the uh, pressure plates. The difference between the two is this pretty much self-adjusts itself and this does not. So when you're driving and your clutch starts to wear out, your pedal with this clutch, the conventional, without the self-adjusting, will start to engage at the very top of the clutch, like when you're letting out. This one fools you the entire time. You could be still letting off right in the middle the whole time and then all of a sudden, boom, one day it goes out. And you have no, had no idea that uh, your clutch is starting to completely wear out. Um, also, they were stating on a lot of forums that these clutches, the self-adjusting ones, are more prone to problems because the adjustment um, springs on them don't always work properly and your pedal actually doesn't engage properly. So these also, on the non-self-adjusting ones, they apply more torque um, because they have a higher clamp load which is actually pretty true because if we compare these two pressure plates here and I'm gonna set it on over here and here's the pressure plate here's the original one as you can see we got the springs here now you have to compress the uh, plates the fingers all the way down and then readjust the spring in or you can't reinstall it. Now I went ahead and just got the conventional. It was about 60 some dollars cheaper. New clutch versus the old clutch. The old clutch, as you can see, has a lot wider disc. Now this isn't like top of the line clutch here. This is just a Duralast clutch. But um, the way they got these, I guess it airs a lot better and it gets rid of brake dust stays a little cooler maybe with those extra slots. Um, as for weight, I'd say this one weighs a little bit more than the newer one. They feel close, but I'd say not quite. Um, anyhow, this uh, bearing right here, you're going to want to remove it from your uh, flywheel. We're going to take that out. Also, the pressure plates over here. we got a nice brand new pressure plate. And also it comes with the removal tool for the slave cylinder. Um, you just slide it in there and pop off the rivet. It has instructions right here. I'll just show you while I'm already at it. So here they show you how to bleed it and everything. So let's see. Yep, It's pretty cool how they actually show you. But here's that tool. Um, I'm actually going to keep it because it works great. Right here, it slides right under the bracket. You push forward, it pops right out, as you can see here. It's uh, very simple. Not a lot of people have to use um, something else, but this right here, I don't need this because it has the clip, um, but they said you can remove it without taking the clip out. Um, a lot of people, they'll use uh, gear oil, not gear oil, grease or whatever, some lenthane grease, but uh, a lot of people will get a lot of promising results with the bread. So you're just going to take bread and you're just going to kind of stuff it in that hole. Pack it in there really good. You're going to use a 3 8 inch extension. And uh, that's it. You're going to hammer it in and what's going to happen is the bread is going to compress and it's going to push the uh, bearing out from the back side. Basically, it's a hydraulic effect. So, you take your extension, an old beater one, and you just hammer it in there, and it's gonna pop the bear, uh, the uh, pilot bearing out. Now, it sounds ridiculous, but um, it's gonna work. So, with just the three-eighths extension, you're gonna want to tape it up. Um, I taped it up to the original size of the pilot bearing, the new one. And uh, you're going to want to put it in there and hammer it because 
with the regular 3 8 it's not thick enough it kind of shoots out the uh, bread once you hit it a couple times the bread kind of turns into rubber you'll notice that it gets really rubbery after 10 wax of putting the tape on as you can see the pilot bearing has come out and this is the bread it just pressurizes it and the bread gets behind it and pushes it right out when you whack it now when you whack it you gotta hit it pretty hard I mean give it some good wax but as you can see it's coming right out here's the pilot bearing no lie the bread was pushing it out as you can see the bread's back here now we just gotta kinda dig the bread out and that's it now with installing this new pilot bearing as you can see you want to install it with the plastic piece on the inside first sticking out you don't want to install it like this you want to install it like this so you can see that plastic piece we're going to just put it in there just like that and kind of get it even just going to take our sledge just gently tap all the corners back and forth eventually it'll go in okay it's all in you can tell by just being in a little flush I just used the uh, back end after I got it started just kind of tapped it in with the butt end of the sledgehammer so now that that's in we're gonna go ahead and put our clutch key in with it first our clutch and then our clutch key and then we're gonna put our uh, pressure plate on this is how you're gonna install it you first put the clutch up and then slide the alignment tool key in the grooves and now we're gonna put our pressure plate right over top of that bolt it up remember uh, 15 to 24 foot pounds on the 10 millimeter bolts and when we're done with that we pull the clutch key out and that's it then the transmission's ready to be put back on but before we put the transmission back on we're gonna go right ahead and install the slave cylinder and I'm actually gonna seal up the rear end of the transmission casing again now keep in mind when you install this pressure plate you're going to want to look for each of the dowel pins that guide it in and just get it just right and then slide it over and the dowel pins will hold it for a moment and then you can go ahead and put your bolts in now keep in mind when I put this clutch in okay you don't want the springs I should have told you earlier but you want the higher part of the clutch facing out you want the flatter part of the clutch going towards the flywheel. I've heard a lot of people they reverse them and when you do that it's obviously the wrong way but when you do that the clutch will never disengage. So just make sure that your springs, the higher part of the springs on the clutch is sticking out. So I went ahead and torqued all of them down in an X pattern to 24 foot pounds and now all you do is you pull the key out and it's lined perfectly up for the transmission to uh, be guided right back in there. As for the transmission, the slave cylinder, you have a 10 millimeter there and another 10 millimeter right there. Just take those two out, it should come out. So here's what it looks like with the uh, slave cylinder removed, just those two 10 millimeters right there and it comes sliding right forward. Uh, also, I'm not gonna put it back together right today. I'll wait till tomorrow because I actually forgot to pick up this uh, transmission front seal. Um, if I were you, I would pick one up also. There's no point in doing this uh, swap out without doing everything right. So uh, it's probably very cheap. Hopefully, it doesn't cost this whole entire mechanism like uh, the main shaft seal that cost, uh, or the rear main seal that cost almost $50. <laughs> All right, so you're probably thinking, well, how do I get it out? because it's uh, pretty suctioned to that bell housing. What you do is you slide a uh, you know, half inch extension and you slide it through the hole over here and you put it right through there and you tap it that way until it spins a little bit. And then it just, it'll come right off. And you just slide it right over the, and that's it. Right over the spline. And this is what we're looking at. We're gonna clean it up and we're going to reseal the whole thing and then put the new uh, input shaft 
seal on that I got. The part number is uh, 1990 at uh, Advance Auto. Alright, so what you're going to do is you're just going to get a socket that fits this uh, input shaft seal. You're going to put it over it and you're just going to hammer it down until it pops out. Then take it out, put the other one in the same exact way. As for putting the uh, new seal in, you're going to put the flat side is always going to be on the outside like this so you don't want to see this on the front of it so the flat side is going to go down so we're going to start it off with our thumbs and honestly you might be able to push this all the way in with your thumbs kind of like what I'm doing but if it gets a little tough just uh, use a big socket now I got it in there a pretty good amount and the socket right here I'm using is to 30 and it fits perfectly around there you could even maybe go with 31 but I think 30 is as good as you're gonna get and then just give it a little tap in a circle and it looks like we're good so now all we're gonna do is just put a little bit of uh, silicone or uh, some grease and then slide it back on the shaft. Now right before I put this back together I went ahead and pulled this bottom ring off and the top ring in the seal. Cleaned them up and uh, I put the rings back in exactly the way I took them out and the uh, grease, I greased them up, it helps them stick in place so when you put the cover back on everything lines up uh, as it should. So we got the gray RTV all over it. I also have a uh, little bit of all-purpose grease inside the uh, main seal also if you look over here I greased up the shaft a little right at the end just so it'll uh, um, catch it better and make it slide in and not have to worry about ripping any of the gasket be careful on the spline right there when you're putting it in but other than that it should be good I'm gonna clean this up a little bit hit it with some steel wool because this is going to go into the pilot bearing and then uh, that should be it. Now it's time for the uh, clutch slave cylinder part number uh, I believe it's 10681 or it's 90,001 but anyhow comes with the uh, throw out bearing it's in good shape uh, pretty much you got a little seal on the front you leave that clip in right there, no need to take it out. It'll clip right in. <clears throat> also comes with a little nipple on the uh, bleeder valve. So everything's set to go. All you do is put your two uh, 10 millimeter bolts back in there. The very top is, you really can't put it in backwards. This goes up top, this goes side, just goes in the transmission just like this. <clears throat> also, it comes with the tool to release. If you look here, this tool right here is to release the clip that goes in here. It pops it out if you ever have to take it off again. Also, if you look over here, the clutch kit came with one too. This right here, you can just throw in your glove box. It uh, allows you to bleed it for the bleeder valve, but I usually just use a 8 millimeter wrench. Um, right here, this seal right here is for the line underneath the truck that plugs into here and this little clip goes on that line so take the old clip off, put the new seal on before you plug it back in. That's pretty much it. You just see how it is. All it does is just slide forward um, and then you tighten down the two 10 millimeters. I just kind of hand tighten them really good and that's about it. Well. Well, I got the transmission down. I'm just going to take all these bolts out of the back um, transfer part and I'm going to reseal it, clean it up first, get all the old uh, RTV off and reseal it with some new uh, gray RTV. And then up top here, as you can see where the shifter box is, this separates. I'm um, very possibly going to take that off and seal that all up. Alright, so we got the uh, rear casing off. We're going to clean up all the gasket you got laying around here, clean it up really good, make sure it's all off, dry it, and then we're going to get some gray RTV, run it all around, 
and uh, I'm not even going to really hit it with a uh, torque wrench. I'm just going to kind of zip them in, kind of hand feel tighten them, and it should be good. Here's where I'm at right now. I got it all uh, RTV'd up pretty good, and now I'm going to put it on there. The uh, rear end transfer part is all sealed up, as you can see. That's what you want to see it coming out like that. So that's all sealed. We're not going to have a single leak. I didn't have any leaks in it uh, prior, but uh, it's already out, so I'm going to reseal the whole entire transmission. Use the original rubber gasket that's on there, but I'm going to put some uh, gray RTV on there and torque it down and call it a day. Okay, so I cleaned it up, took the hat off, and uh, this is what it looks like inside. Here's what I got going on. I just siliconed it. Some RTV, just nothing crazy, but just a light coat on the gasket itself. And then I'm going to put it in there. You got to make sure that you get the uh, shift forks into the uh, grooves right there. As you can see, there's two of them, two big ones. And then if you do that, you're good to go. The clutch kit comes with this spline lubricant. You're just going to put it all over this, all over the spline. So, and I usually use put it in there for the pilot bearing. So go ahead and Put the grease all over that and then you're ready to install the transmission. Okay, transmission is going in right about now. I got the top of the hat on the transmission where the shifter is all done. Clutch is all done and ready. And now it's just to make sure all your wires are out of the way. And just slide it forward. And that's it. Okay, I finally got it in there after about an hour of wrestling it. Basically, you're going to just barely get the spline in there. And then after that, you're going to put a bolt once you line it up, kind of tighten it a little bit halfway, and then go up and down slowly and push, and eventually it'll lock in. But man, that was a pain in the butt to do with just one person, even with a uh, jack stand. So finally got it in, and then once we bolt all these up, I'll get the uh, main bracket, and then I'll end up filling up the transmission, fluid, I'm going to fill the transmission fluid this time. I'll do the shift knob just because it's already out. And uh, pull the drain bolt or the uh, fill bolt and fill it until it starts to overflow a little bit. And then the starter and drive axle and we're pretty much done. Okay guys, transmission, all the bolts are tightened in. Um, don't forget on the starter when you put it back on there's that one ground wire that goes to the top. It is right, right there up in the top corner. It's kind of hard to show you guys. Hold on. You can see the bolt right there. That bolt, that's uh, there's a wire, a ground wire that goes under that. There's a nut and a bolt, so don't forget that. All right, I went ahead and changed out the seal. Just used the little uh, pick. And these little ones pop it off first slot after you get the seal off or the rubber uh, o-ring slide the new clip on this is how the clip is supposed to look and leave the pin in there or the clip just you're going to push until it clicks now I'm trying to do this with one hand here but and that's it. Just oh, we kind of missed it off the camera, but when you're done pushing, just go in and out a couple of times and make sure uh, you're in there. Now that we got everything back together on the transmission, we have to bleed the excess air that's remaining in this slave cylinder. So we're going to fill this uh, reservoir right here, the clutch reservoir. We're going to fill it with dot three or greater um, brake fluid. Fill it to the top. You're going to remove the uh, rubber boot right here. You know, just take that out. Fill it all the way to the top. Crack the bleeder until it spits out all the bubbles. I'll show you that in here in a second. I'm going to fill this and then we're going to go underneath the truck and crack the nipple. Here is the uh, bleeder nipple. I'm trying to hold the light for you guys. Right up here, very top, I'm using an 8 millimeter. Um, you're just going to pop off this little rubber grommet right here. You can barely get your wrench on it. 
Alright, so I cracked it. And we should be, in a minute, having some fluid come down. Nothing yet. There we go. You can see it dripping. It was There was air in the system. Now that's running pretty good. We're going to let that run for just a minute. And it looks like we don't have any more uh, air in the system. And now we're going to just tighten it up. Go ahead and put the cap back on it. And we're pretty much done. Alright, so I went underneath the vehicle and cracked the uh, fill bolt. You don't want to crack the drain bolt. You want to open up the fill bolt. And I'm going to go ahead and pour the transmission fluid right down in here. And don't worry, this stuff says that it's uh, super tech, but it's not. It's the Mercon stuff. Um, I just put it in this container. Mercon 5 is what you're going to need. So go ahead and put your funnel down in there. And just pour it right down in there. So this is what you're looking for. I got mine on the ground. But you want it to drip. Just like that. And when it stops dripping, you're just going to put the um, plug back in. And that's it. You're done. Now I'm going to go ahead and assemble the shifter. Basically I put some uh, gray RTV on here. Also I'm going to use some all-purpose grease. So the first thing I'm going to do with the parts I got laying here is we have the shifter. And I'm going to grease that up real quick. Okay, so here's how it goes. First we're going to drop this down in there. Alright, if you look right here you have the two um, lines in it and on the back side you want this piece right here facing you so we we'll drop it down in there like that now the next part we're going to be doing is this little guy it's got the little clip on it and everything I'm gonna put some grease right down in here all right and you're gonna set the hollow inside part on top of the ball and make sure you get the lines right here over the guides so we're gonna set that down there now that we have that I'm gonna just pack it full of grease now we got our RTV already on there we're gonna take the uh, cap and basically you're just it can only go on one way because you got one two three t30 hex heads and you're just going to slide it over top and now we're going to take our hex head screws and we're going to put those on there don't forget this little rubber guy in case you took it off um some people i was watching a uh, video on youtube and someone didn't know what it was now that that's on there nice and tight you're going to take the cap part the rubber boot I gotta find mine we're going to take our boot and just set it right on top we got four screws you're just going to screw them right down where the holes were just make sure everything's lined up we're gonna do the shifter basically as you can see here there's a big hole on this side and a small hole on this side so the big hole in this side is going to go towards the driver side just because that's the way the stick shifts so you're going to slide it down and you have this bolt right here now this part right here the flat part is going to go forward because it's going to go towards that shaft so we're going to take it and we're first going to get it so we can put it in there all right just like that and now we're going to take our big 17 millimeter bolt and we're going to tighten it now we're going to take our center console 
and we're just going to slide it right up over. Now right here there's a lip on the back side of the console right here. I don't know if you can see it. And right here the lip. You're going to I'll just put it down in second. I'll feed it over at an angle first. Just want to scoop that. You can always shove your boot down there last. So, and basically, it's just going to hit like that. And now, what's going to happen is you're just going to screw these two screws in right here, and we're done. We just put the boot down, and that's it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how to change out the clutch system on a Mazda B-Series and Ford Ranger. Don't forget, comment, like, and subscribe to my videos, and I'll see you guys next time. <music>